All right, I'll put this in my blog on Monday. I will be talking about a Saturday night, Sunday morning event for Northeast Oklahoma and possibly Southeast Oklahoma. Then, of course, from there it goes east. So this is the new severe weather threat from the Storm Prediction Center, which does highlight here for parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. And then on Sunday, a much larger area. And then a back repeat here on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday, there may be some morning uh, storms, morning potential tornadoes, that kind of deal. We'll go and we'll talk about that later as we get closer to the event. I mean, we're too far away for that type of detail, but right now the models are hinting at that could be a possibility that we'll be looking at. Okay, when you look kind of a close up view of that, here's northeast Oklahoma in the slight risk here. It goes from Tulsa to Stillwater out toward Enid, points north. This is the tornado shaded area here in green. Yeah, you can see that's not a whole lot of area. And that's not a lot of colors on the map, just the lowest one. Uh, here's the wind and here's the hail. So this is mostly going to be a hail type event. Uh, and I'll show you that here in the detail. Now, when you look at the uh, AI algorithm, these are always fun to look at. So these are the AI models. This is where it thinks the tornado threat is here for um, late Saturday night into Sunday morning. Uh, here is the hail and here's the wind. So a much larger region um, than it is confined in that. And that's just because I believe uh, it, some models indicate there could be some storms that develop south uh, from where we're going to be looking at. But if you look at the high resolution model and you look at just the probability of a tornado within 25 miles of an area, uh, let me zip right here to the spot, and that is right here. This is where it peaks out. And I don't know if you can barely see this, but this is basically 2 to 3%. So you can't get much lower than that. In other words, the likelihood of a tornado is almost non existent. I mean, it's about as low as you can get without being zero. All right, so that, this is our machine learning on our high resolution models. Look at the, the NATO cast, which actually does a fairly decent job sometimes at predicting tornadoes, and it's barely even on the board. 0.1% uh, to a dot of 1%. Again, this is the lowest it could possibly be. What that means is there's no confidence at all there's gonna be a tornado, and I'll show you why that is here in a minute. If you do look at the severe weather potential for tornadoes, though, after Saturday night and Sunday morning, uh, it's going to be confined here across Arkansas. So this is going to be Sunday afternoon here across northeast Arkansas. Uh, just barely tips the, the southeast tip of, of Oklahoma, northeast Texas. Uh, so kind of in this quadrant. And that is where you had that larger area from the Storm Prediction Center. And let's see, there's Sunday evening and then there's Sunday night and then on into Monday morning. So that whole area shifts kind of south and east. So basically this is a little hot spot area for potential tornadoes as we head into Sunday. All right. Now, what's going to happen right now, this is the upper levels of the atmosphere on Saturday. So I'm going to back up here. This is Saturday at midnight. So this is our batch of upper level disturbance right here. This is our lift in the atmosphere that's coming through. And remember, if it comes in this time of the day, that's great for Oklahoma because typically that means we'll be capped, less threat of severe weather, etc. But also means less rain, which you do need. But this is what's moving through at the midnight hour, triggering some thunderstorms here across uh, northern and eastern Oklahoma as that shifts on off to the east. And then on Sunday afternoon right here, that first wave has moved on off. And you have another little piece up here to the north of us. And this stuff out here is not going to do anything. Uh, we've already cleared out and kind of dried out, so that's not going to create any additional lift for us. If you look um, below that at the 700 millibar level where the really good forcing is to kind of get things to go. So here's in the evening hours. And this right here is representative of a cold front that's barreling down to the south and east. Uh, so that is what the major lift is on. So this lift right here, this boundary, is where you're going to get the focus of the thunderstorms to develop. Now some miles again had highlighted trying to develop down here across some weak pseudo dry line. I just don't think that's going to be happening. It's just not showing up really strong in the data at this point in time. Uh, but let's go on into Sunday. So see there's Sunday morning. So all the lift now, you can tell is in, in Arkansas. There's Sunday midday. And then Sunday afternoon, so there you go. So again, in Arkansas, uh, central, northeast, southwest, out here in northeast Texas, that would be where your storms um, uh, develop on late Sunday. There's a good hint of the storms popping up here on this model here across central and southwestern Arkansas. All right, and then they expand further up north and east from there. So there could be some nighttime tornadoes in this area just because the timing. And uh, it's easier, just so you know, uh, for um, geography-wise, um, latitude, longitude wise, however you want to look at it, say it, but it's easier to get nighttime tornadoes in this part of the country than it is in this part of the country, just because the way the cap works for us. Can the cap is a inversion layer of warm air that uh, suppresses thunderstorm development. So we get that in our favor, whereas they do not. It comes off the Rockies, and that's why. We are closer to the Rockies, therefore we get all that hotter, drier air that comes down, doesn't quite make it to them, so therefore they don't get saved overnight, whereas we do. 
in most cases. Okay, so here's a look at the wind. Uh, we're going to have a south wind here uh, for tonight and tomorrow. Uh, and then for tomorrow evening, let's go on here to, let's go right about here, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, here we go. So 10 o'clock, this is where we're having our cold front work through um, into northwest Oklahoma. And so this colder air is going to be coming into the state. Now I'd say colder, cooler, you know how it is this time of the year. But it is the focus to get those thunderstorms to finally break the cap along this area. Be, uh, and I'll, let's see, let me go through a couple hours more. So there's midnight. Uh, let's go through to, let's go stop at 3 o'clock in the morning. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, that cold front boundary is pretty much right through Tulsa and Oklahoma City. All right, so that means any storms that develop um, and riding uh, to the north of this boundary in this area are above the cold front boundary. They're, they're above the rooted area, we call it, in the boundary layer, which means they're elevated, which means they're just hail makers. Uh, it's very difficult to get a tornado or damaging winds when you have elevated thunderstorms. Here's a look at the 850 millibar temperatures. All right, so here we go. You see how they cool down right here, this little line? This is our front, that uh, effective front that comes in at 850 millibars. So there's midnight up to about 3 o'clock in the morning. So you can see how you've gotten this cooler air right here that is coming in by the color contour change. Um, so down below, here's 22 degrees Celsius. Up here is up to 15 and 13 degrees Celsius. Now some of this is rain cooled and others is just because of the fact you've got that cold front that's coming in. Okay, so let's take a look what that looks like when you look at instability. You need cape and shear for thunderstorms and also for tornadic thunderstorms at that, right? So let's stop at 7 o'clock in the afternoon. I want to show you what's going on here across Oklahoma. So here you go. Here's your little dry line bulge. It looks like right in here. Here's our cold front up in here. Um, I have a pseudo dry line looks like in here as well uh, with winds coming out of the uh, southwest in these two areas, right? So typically this means a little surface low in this spot. Well, let's just take a look down here in southwest Oklahoma. What does the atmosphere look like? Um, well, if you look at the NAM, it does have a potential, let's see, the cap is around minus 50, minus 63 in that area. Okay, so basically it should mean that the cap holds, all right? It should mean that we're just barely capped enough to where a thunderstorm shouldn't develop. Now, if they did develop by chance, all right, they're a little bit on the high base side. You see it's LCL, it's a little high. Uh, it needs to be down lower for good tornado environment. It's a little high, but the hail is up quite a bit higher. So this is probably why the AI algorithms are still hanging on to hope that you can get some thunderstorms down here across southern Oklahoma as a result of that. Let's go up here to northern Oklahoma in this area. And you can see the atmosphere is a lot drier. See the, the dew point depression here between the two, the green and the red, is a lot farther apart. That means a lot more drier air to work with. And that's harder for uh, updraft cells to uh, sustain themselves because there's too much dry air entrainment and they don't really get a good shot to go. So, plus, they have a cap to overcome with the out value of around a minus 105, which means it will never go without brute forcing from the front. Okay, so that's, that's the reason why you get no storms out there. So, maybe some storms down here with peak heating if we can heat up just right. Um, otherwise, these storms up here can't form until the front comes in. So, we go through time. There's 10, 11 o'clock. And see how this front right here, effective front, just shoves down all the instability. It wipes it away up here to the north and then keeps it, of course, down south of the front right here. Uh, if we were to look here at 11 o'clock, that same area near the dry line in southwest Oklahoma, you will see the cap has mega increased. A lot of dry air too. So again, that means any storms that we're trying to get going down here, they would have already moved in this region. And if they even held together, uh, for example, let me just say, look at 11 o'clock, see what happens. Look at that, see this big cap build in, which means any storms that do try to go, they probably won't last. They probably won't quite mature and they'll fall apart. Now up here uh, along the frontal boundary, let's say, let's go to, let's see, there's still water there. So let's just go say north of Guthrie. Uh, on I-35, just for a little quick spot. Look at this, cat builds in as well. So what happens is that front, although it tries to force the storms to get going, if and when they can get going, uh, and they probably will, they're going to be riding in this layer of the atmosphere right here. So we're gonna pretend that not where we live at the surface, but that this is the surface. And so now when you try to raise a parcel of air from here to here to here and then up, you get a lot of instability to work with. That's the difference between this red line and my yellow line. So that's all of your upper level instability. So that is a lot of instability, all right? So that means you can get some big hail with this type of situation. And that's what the algorithm is going for, two, three, four inches of hail uh, for some of these thunderstorms. So that means these will be elevated, and this is why you can't get tornadoes in this environment. I have probably my entire forecasting existence, 30 plus years, 
uh, that the number of times I've seen a treadle in a strong inversion layer like that is, is less than on one hand. Um, it just, they're, it's almost impossible. Um, okay, so let's go to the radar output and how it looks. How should all this play out? So there's our little thunderstorms along the cold front in uh, south central Kansas, Wichita area. So again, some hailers up there, some brief heavy rain. Uh, might get some pockets of wind up there. All right, so there's those thunderstorms now developing around midnight. Now, again, our effective cold front at this point in time is like this. So that means they're behind the cold front. All right, that means they're not surface-based. They're elevated, which means they're just hail. All right, let's go to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Again, by then, remember, our front is about like this. So that means all these showers and thunderstorms up here are behind the boundary. So again, you guys up in Bartlesville, Ponca City, southern and southeastern Kansas, maybe as far south as Tulsa, you're going to get some few thunderstorms around your area and likely probably a little bit of hail with that. All right, did I go out in time all the way? Let me see. Let's go on through. Uh, so there was, by the way, there's a few spotty showers down here in southeast Oklahoma on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon early, but not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the afternoon late. All right. Right here. There. Uh, six o'clock. Barely see it on this map. Let me see if I can move this up a little bit. There, you can see a little bit better. Way down there, southeast Oklahoma around Paris. And so that is where your thunderstorm section would be in a far southeast Oklahoma. So what we're going to do is, is switch maps to Arkansas. All right. So we'll show you again. We got that rain out there this morning. That's going to go bye bye. All right. Let's go in and forward in time. Let's see. Let's go to Saturday evening. Okay. Let's go to Sunday morning. Where are my storms? Right there. Okay. So there's my thunderstorms here for 7 p.m. on Sunday. This is just kind of starting here in northeast Arkansas, just getting going. But down here, they'll be far ongoing already here in far southeast Oklahoma, Hot Springs, Russell, uh, down here to Idabel, uh, Texarkana, and Paris. So that is going to be your trouble spot here for your Sunday evening between about 7 and 10 o'clock. And then everything will start to move to the east um, with time, as we talked about, for some overnight activity. And I'll show you what that looks like here just on this particular model. Once we get past that time frame, so let's go on to 60. Okay, so there's 10 p.m. Uh, so between 10 p.m. And, and midnight, it's going through the Little Rock area. Uh, then after that, you can see how it kind of lines out more of a squall line type appearance. Uh, there's 1 o'clock in the morning, then there's 4, and there's 7. So uh, there's your time frame from Arkansas, et cetera. Okay, rainfall amounts. Obviously, we do get some showers and thunderstorms. It can rain for you. It can rain pretty good. So we're looking at about a quarter of an inch or more um, back here in those clusters of thunderstorms that develop Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then for any activity on, of course, we had today, but also in addition to Sunday, um, we're going to have a little bit more to add to that down this area of the state. So unfortunately, we're not going to get a whole lot here in central Oklahoma. We had some spits out there today, and that was about it. It was frustrating. Um, hopefully, you know, there's, there's more opportunities for next week. Speaking of which, uh, especially across the eastern half of the state, like we mentioned, I have to be dealing with some severe weather, uh, say for Wednesday. And we'll talk about more about that later. I'll put an update in the blog and do a, a video forecast for you later then. But otherwise, temperatures looks like in pretty much for the most part into the 40s and 50s overnight. Daytime highs into the 60s and 70s. So ideal type temperatures here for our spring. Um, enjoy the warm day on Saturday because that'll be the one. That's the last time we'll see the 80s, at least for a little while um, until we head into next week. So there you go. That's the, the total forecast for you. So I don't remember, I don't pay attention to what gets floated around the internet. Uh, I don't pay attention to who says what. Don't care. I'm too busy with my own life. I ain't got time for what everybody else has to say. Don't need to hear what they have to say anyway. <laughs> I, only hear, I only hear what I need, need to say. Um, and I, when it comes time to listen to severe weather type stuff, the reason why you want to wait um, until you get closer to the event is because those fine details I just told you, you're not going to know those five days out, a week out, 10 days out. All you're going to know is that there's enough conditions there. We're probably going to have to have some storms around. But you don't even know the strength of the cap, which means that can prevent all storms at all from forming, even if the atmosphere is totally potent. Um, you know, and it's uh, one of those deals where, well, what if it does happen 10 days from now? Well, good job. You know what? A broken clock is right, what, once a day, twice a day, <laughs> depending on which analog you're looking at, if it's digital or analog. So, you know, who cares? 
Um, when it comes to planning, okay, fine. Plan, there might be some thunderstorms. Guess what? It's spring. There's always going to be some thunderstorms around. So I like to wait until we get closer to the event, kind of like now. You know, what's in that 48-hour to 72-hour window, you can get a lot more detail in the model data. And that way you can infer a lot more things that you couldn't do before. Um, and that relieves a lot of anxiety and plus lets you know what your actual threat is. Um, so that's what's going up there in northeast Oklahoma, southern and southeastern Kansas for Saturday night and Sunday. And uh, then again for Arkansas as well and points east from there. That is it for me. I appreciate you guys tuning in. It's a little long, but I hadn't done a, a, a video, you know, thing all week, except for, was it Monday? Uh, Monday night, and so uh, I need to catch up on what was happening uh, on the big picture. You can always probably watch this at, like, 1.5 speed <laughs> if you're watching after the fact. Um, but anyway, I know it was a little long for our lunchtime, but I had a, there were some other technical things I had to, to work through, which ate a few minutes of time, too, at the beginning of this, and that was frustrating to deal with, but I'll get those worked out as we go forward. Um, and I may have to switch as far as, you know, having all of you guys watch on all the individual platforms that you like. I may have to try to do it where I do a one centralized um, way to stream from, from, like, my server, on my web server, from my website. The problem with that is it's very expensive to stream on hours at a time um, um, from your own database. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's some other problems to work out with that. So I'm not sure how doable that is, which is why everybody uses the existing platforms that you're on. Let them take the brunt of the load of the of the bandwidth, etc. Um, so there's a reason why you know everybody's content creators don't all broadcast just from their own website only, just because of that fact. Now I'll be looking at some ways to try to work around that because I've got to come up with something a little bit better than this. It's a nightmare on my end to get all this stuff loaded. The time it takes to get all this loaded is like 20 minutes. It's it's like it's if I'm in a hurry, that's that's problematic. Especially if I'm talking about tornadoes, I got a real problem. 20 minutes to get set up. Come on now, um, but by clicking everything and get all these stuff. Yeah, it's it's something. But anyway, that's my problem, not yours. I'll get it worked out. But regardless, thanks again for tuning in and uh, for support. And make sure you tell your friends and family. If they haven't heard, uh, they can watch my uh, live broadcasts like this, including the tornado coverage, and get access to my blogs uh, as they become subscribers and members on the respective platforms they like to follow me on. And uh, that way they get up-to-date with information like this as they go throughout the tornado season. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend if I don't see you. Take care.